Yeah, the DICE study was created already in 2008 and we started to collect data in clinical practice of consecutive patients who are treated with statins for secondary prevention. And the intention of the DICE program was to get an idea how patients are treated for secondary prevention with special focus on dyslipidemia and we wanted to know how the rate is of goal achievement in the LDL cholesterol setting according to the current guidelines. So we wanted to know if guidelines are applied and patients are put, let's say, to their goals in clinical practice. And we collected data in many countries all over the world, so including Europe, Canada, Middle East and Asia Pacific. And we ended up uh, with a total amount of nearly 70,000 patients uh, enrolled in the study. The comparison of the both periods of data collection is showing that we had an increase of um, the number of patients being at goal under uh, treatment uh, and we looked at the data what was different and the main difference was that there was a, um, a higher rate of patients um, treated with potent statins like Rosova and atorvastatin, which was not the case in, in the first survey, so there was a predominantly use of simvastatin, so there's a movement towards more potent statins, which is of course a conclusion what we might do, and the mean dosage also went up, so whereas the mean equivalent dose, dose of atorvastatin was about 20 milligrams in the beginning, we ended up with 30 milligrams, so there is a movement towards more potent and higher dosages of a statin and there is also more uh, use of the combination treatment with acetamide and this all, uh, helps to bring patients to their goal. The, I think the essential finding of DICES is of course all of these patients, this was the inclusion criteria for being put into the uh, observational trial was they all were on a statin which is standard therapy for lipid lowering in secondary prevention and of course according to the risk of the patients the patients should reach some goals which are defined by guidelines based on the evidence of randomized controlled trials so for very high risk patients we know the target is or the goal should be to bring patients uh, to a value below 70 milligrams per deciliter for LDL cholesterol. And um, the DICES program showed that only 21% of the patients treated with statins did reach their goal. And this is, let's say, not a good news because uh, in, in a, the other way around, uh, nearly 80% are not at goal we would like them to have according to the current guidelines. Of course, we can improve it because we have to be aware of uh, we have to be aware of what we are doing. So, in other words, a, a couple of years back, um, we as cardiologists were happy if even a statin was on board of the uh, normal medication list of a patient. Now we have to do the next step. It's not enough to be treated in principle or to treat in principle, but we have to treat uh, to the individual target we would like to, to the individual goal for the patient in order to reduce his risk. So in other words, we have to take care of any individual patient and bring him to his own individual goal. We did see in, uh, in DICES that the use of statin was such that in many cases um, um, statins were used which are not as potent as other statins for instance and also the dosages of the statin in use was very low. So we calculated an equivalent dose, statin dose for atorvastatin for instance and we ended up seeing that the, the mean dosage used was 20 milligrams of atorvastatin. So answering your question is clear we have to increase the dose of the statin, we should use higher, uh, more potent statin like Artova or Rosova statin and we probably of course should use a combination treatment which is available together with acetrol, um, so acetamibe, acetrol is it, sorry, it's a German name, acetamibe, um, so the combination treatment is available, we have data about the outcome benefit um, using the combination treatment um, uh, coming from the IMPROVE-IT trial. So we should be aware of the goal and we should try to, to get there.
Well, I, I must say, in principle, of course, there is no age limitation. And of course, you have to individually judge if a dose of a statin um, is applicable by means of um, side effects, is a patient suffering from side effects. But in my belief or in my experience, um, the so-called um, limitation by side effects or intolerance to a statin is probably overestimated at this time. So if you, if you take care and you have a variety of different statins, statins available, you will be able to put a patient on a statin and will also be able to put him on a, on a dosage which is of benefit for him. It's always um, documenting what we are doing and reflecting what we are doing is giving, of course, assistance that we might improve. And I can tell you that DICE, the DICES program started in 2008 and we did DICES 1 as a big study and we then later on did DICES 2 altogether is more than 70,000 patients. And in some of the countries we, we um, collected data in DICES 1, we also did it in the second phase in DICES 2. Um, so DICES 1 was done in 2008, 2009 and DICES 2 was done in 2013 and 2014 and we had about 10 countries participating in both uh, uh, surveys and we compared and I, I have a presentation uh, tomorrow where we compared the situation of goal achievement in DICES 1 so which is 2008 and 9 and then DICES 2 2013 14 and we did see that there was an improvement already so uh, whereas in DICES 1 only 21 percent of patients were at goal in DICES 2 already 29 percent were at goal so this is an absolute increase of eight or nine percent which is an, a relative increase of nearly 50 percent more patients at goal as compared to the first um, surveillance so um, this is good news already, so I think we, we made people aware of the need to bring patients to guidelines, but there's still some way to go to, to bring it even up to, uh, to numbers which we would like to see.